Hey everybody, it's Jack Devine. I'm here today to teach you this kind of cool E shuffle bluesy thing. Uh, it's got some country and some jazz and some blues kind of smooshed it together to create uh, a nice sound. I hope you dig it, okay? Here we go. <laughs> So, there's a lot going on there, folks. I don't think this is going to stay put for very long. Let's straighten that out. Okay, so welcome back to my cellar. <laughs> it's a little echoey down here, so pardon me. I'm going to try my best to teach this to you. Um, it's a song called Setting on Top of the World, and it's a, kind of an old folky blues thing that I stole from Doc Watson and adapted to... Uh, torture my friends, I would get together and play this kind of stuff with them and uh, every Thursday night for about five years and learned how to play bluegrass and kind of American style and blues and jazzy-ish stuff, a little gypsy jazz here and there and everybody just kind of brought all their best licks out, got uh, a couple of glasses of wine or whiskey in them and had a great night and uh, this is one of those songs that I haven't played in a while but I started practicing it the other day to brush up on this stuff and I thought I would share a couple of the central tenets of it. So the melody is out of an E major pentatonic shuffle and it does not use a lot of flat threes or dominant sevens. It, if it's using the dominant seven, it's because it's trying to uh, create that tension that's pulling towards the four chord, okay? That's gonna be the A chord here for us. So there'll be some times where you'll see this kind of sound. Uh, <laughs> That's begging to come to the, to the third of the four chords. So the chord's basic outline is E. part where it stays on E, there's a little tiny progression that happens inside the E chord. It goes, but now she's gone, and I don't worry no more. So on its way to the C sharp chord, this, that's the sixth dominant, the E chord kind of does this little walk down. That's kind of 
kind of the one place where you know people get caught up is because it has this deceptive little thing where it does the C sharp and then a two five one. Okay, and your uh, your daddy's blues licks aren't going to work in here because it's just too it's it's calling on the, that brighter, more melodic and major sound, um, which I, I think is something that a lot of guitar players don't uh, know enough about. So let's, without further ado, let's learn the melody, okay? Okay, it starts out with this very simple arpeggio. And throughout the song, uh, I do this where I slide into vocal, uh, I slide into notes. So that's um, B, E, G sharp, B, and then I slide it from the B flat. It's just an E chord. What better to play over E than E? So there it is. Now I do a couple little ghost notey things in there. sharp and this doesn't really count as playing it we're just kind of glissing in out of into the, the C sharp note from this so your brain isn't really hearing that it's hearing but on the way there it just has that little slick little That's our first line. started out kind of basic, just stating the melody, and then I stated it again, up an octave, a little bit more complicated. Then I just kind of go off, and then I come back and play the melody one last time to bring you home. So, E. Okay, that's the, that's the seven chord. Saying, hey, here we go to four. So that's over. So the... stuff for so long, okay? So, okay, then this note, the B, kind of comes in a, a little ahead. It, it, the, but now she's gone, and I don't really know, and there's a deliberate blue note in there that, and what you want to hear, that you 
you can hit that sound super effective because they cause that tension. And this is an example down here, okay? So. <laughs> into that little dyad of the E chord. That's the three and the five. Then we're gonna chromatically walk it down. Or just go. Right, so we're going from, that's E. Try to sing in your brain. Sometimes just playing, playing off of what you're hearing in your head, even though those aren't the notes I'm actually singing, they're, they're, they're close and it, it, it apes the, uh, the approach of a singer. So that's, that's important when you're stating a melody, right? You want to be tasteful, right? You don't want to just come in just blasting. That's just not, that's not gonna, you've got nowhere to go at that point. If you come in at top speed, you've got nowhere to go. So. Uh, we go sitting on top of the world, and then there's a little turnaround. And I just let the band, quote unquote, that, that the loop take that, so that I can gear up for playing the same melody again. But I'm going to take it up an octave, and I'm going to slide in again, to, like I did. Again with the little ghost strokes. Now that's kind of a nice little um, it's, it's an E9 arpeggio with, uh, with an A kind of put in there. So it suspends it and makes it feel a little kind of like uh, It's not like a, it doesn't it doesn't add an augmented feel, but it still kind of takes kind of grabs your ear and tweaks it a little bit. So this is uh, stolen from like a Tim Miller kind of idea of taking a one two one two kind of so one note two notes one note two notes okay. So you can see there E. That's one, three, five, dominant, uh, flat seven rather, and then one, three again. So here we are in this position, and then I just went symmetrical. So that kind of says sus four. And then we, once we hit that note, we're gonna resolve into the third of our A chord. which notes are more integral to the melody and which ones are kind of more recessive. So you want to think dominant and recessive notes within the scale and the chord and the melody all at the same time. And it's definitely enough to make you go uh, get batty. But So that's that same idea. 
So that's still over the A chord. And we're going to walk it down from the B. seems to work really nicely is over the back end of the four chord you can start playing the five using that Charlie Parker enclosure. That's where you start on the fifth tonic, fifth um, tone of the scale, walk it down. Okay, so chromatically walk it down and then come one below the third of the chord you're headed into and slide into it. I do my the same little that's one six five one um, so that ends up giving that nice little you're hitting lots of chords within lots of notes within that kind of uh, six nines you know a lot of that but really more just like almost like an E6 idea. Okay, then our little anticipated two fret band. So that's okay, we're coming up to that G sharp. And then over top of that, uh, that's where we get to bring in our blue note, because again, that's that little, that, that almost, it's like a turnaround within the E chord, but now she's gone. But I don't worry no more. Before we go to the six, again, so that's our idea. That's over the E. And now we get our little. can't have every note be like slapping you like that. It feels nice to get one or two little spicy notes. Okay, so. So that's more like a poked band, like. And then we pre-band up to the third of the B chord. And then resolve it back to E. So. second chorus. Uh, it's definitely more involved and uh, has that fun little, little arpeggio idea. All right, um, last but not least is the third and I'll break that down for you now. Okay, we're going to come up to the ninth fret E note G string. Now this is a fun little kind of pseudo gypsy jazz thing that I do. I, I think I heard it uh, you know, on old Django records, and then I saw Julian Lodge play something that may or may not have been this idea, but that's the best thing about not really knowing. You go home and you figure out a, a, a tool that kind of achieves what you saw, all right? And it's basically a, a run that sounds chromatic, but it isn't, okay? So it starts E, two, flat three, three, four, flat five, five, six, seven, major seven, tonic. Okay, so we've we've heard that turnaround. So over top of the we're gonna play that kind of in anticipation of the one. So that high E is the downbeat of the one chord in the progression after the turnaround. So just over the last little snippet of the uh, turnaround. Okay, that's our first little 
little chunk of the E chord. So that's E, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. One, two, three, four, one. I start on an upstroke. But you can start on a downstroke. I would just do an economy stroke between the G and the B string if I started on a downstroke. As it stands, if I start on an upstroke, it's all alternate. Alright, and this is like a, a deliberately sour note. Okay, we're playing over a major chord, so hearing. sharp nine thing, okay, or flat three, however you want to call it. So, so that's, so that's going to lay out a, a, that sound or even this. So there's a lot of there's a lot of dense stuff in there, but it just kind of sounds twangy. So that's again sliding from the C sharp, not the flat seven. Right? Now you want to kind of slide right to it. You Funny, I'm trying to teach you, and I keep screwing it up. But anyway. right here, that's the top part of an E chord, right? And we're just going to take that, and this is like a classic device of, right? that's like a 7-9 chord before we go to 4. I talked about that in the intro, okay? So, uh, chord. That's open B string chromatically up to the third of the chord. So that's open C, C sharp. And then we're going to hit with our pinky at the fifth fret the high E. That many times. times playing that same little lick, just try to feel the rhythm as best you can. That's the lick I would have come here for. Alright, so that's a fun one. Open E string. Pull off after that C sharp. You can, you can. I tend, I think I pull off. All right, and that's a behind the nutter, right? And you don't really have to be too concerned about getting it to be in tune on that note. You just want to give it the up, like the sensation of upward motion. Because you're going. You're going to have to choke it somehow. So that's. We're trying to imply that. Right? That's an E6. Okay. And we're going to go and try bending the sixth chord back into tune. We're not really that concerned about getting it. Whatever you get, you get. Focus on the high E when you bend it. Because that's... Okay. And it's really not... It's more just to be suggestive that you're 
you know, you're kind of alluding to that sound because you've just done. This kind of sounds like a pedal steel to me anyway, especially you got to press that. You can't look for it. You can't go. You got to. Okay, so. hitting C this is like a C uh, C7 triad okay so that's the B flat the E and the, uh, the G and I'm just gonna go down to a B right from the third of that B chord. And the only reason why I'm sliding from this note is because my finger happens to be there. That actually sounds hipper, I think. To slide from the flat three in, but I'm sliding from that in the, in the take. This one, I don't know why, it just sounded nice to do. Okay, and that's all I'm really applying over top. Then I do sharp five into the into that F sharp chord. It's third, right? That's what's cool about it. That's why it kind of goes outside for a second. And then right back in. And this is like kind of hillbilly bebop. This is not anything sophisticated sophisticated this is totally like not not don't don't think i think anything of myself for knowing this kind of playing this isn't this isn't heavy but it's definitely fun it's not just your standard blues rock stuff okay so there we are we're in our f sharp it's at least the playing is idiomatically correct though it doesn't sound right to play heavy metal over this kind of stuff and it wouldn't sound right to play just straight bird licks either so now what the hell is that why is he doing a diminished run okay three frets three you know apart two this right here that works over f sharp seven and then therefore all we're doing is inverting it right that's the three and the five then we come up three frets and all of a sudden the same fingering becomes the five and the flat seven and then, because dominant seven chords are built out of that, that's a minor third. And this right here is the flat five. All of a sudden, that is, that is, if I just played that and I play this note, you're hearing F sharp, right? But if I play this, you're going to hear a diminished sound. Okay? So the top part of that is kind of related to this diminished thing, so I just take it one step further and create a flat two out of that upper extension. See, I'm playing a G note over top of F sharp, okay? Which technically shouldn't work, but sounds fine, A, because of its register and its duration and the fact that it's in the context of this kind of, kind of on its way to this thing where we're deliberately deconstructing this dominant seven chord. And now we're very inside the B7 chord by going. 
Okay, and then we're gonna do like, I think I did a... So I'm sort of, you know, walking it down in a... Okay, I'm not quite sure about what I was doing by the end of it, I was just hanging on for dear life. But, uh, so, you got... try to say goodbye and show some gratitude and appreciation for anybody that's out there rooting for New York to uh, not uh, I don't know, be wiped out by this plague. Uh, we've been cooped up inside our house for the last three and a half weeks, me and my two children, so give me a cookie for not uh, going totally bat, bat, cra bat shit crazy. <laughs> All right, um, signing off in New York, this is Jack Devine. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and it, you know, I'm sorry if it's a jumbled mess, but I'm a jumbled mess these days. And uh, hopefully you can learn something from what I have to, to say and show you guys, okay? Cheers, and thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you soon. Take care.